Okay, welcome to lesson two of kinetics. Uh, last time we talked about collision theory and things that affect the rate, such as increasing the concentration, raising the temperature, and whatnot. Today, we're actually going to learn how we can calculate that rate law. Um, what the rate law is, is that the, it is the mathematical expression that relates concentration of the reactions, of the reactants to the reaction rate. In other words, concentration and how it affects the uh, production of the product. Um, the rate law is found experimentally and is based on the slowest step in a reaction mechanism. You don't know what a reaction mechanism is at this point. You will in lesson three, but I need you to understand that for right now. Um, the type of rate laws that we are going to be um, calculating are called differential rate laws, so it's based on the doubling the concentration or changing the concentration. How does it affect the rate? There is a second type of rate law called an integrated rate law, we will not be doing those. Those are for AP Chem. They're a little more complicated. They involved plugging uh, graphs and linear regressions and stuff like that. So it's above our pay grade basically in here. So we're just going to be doing the differential ones. So before we get started, let's talk about what the rate law looks like. Okay, so let's say I have this experiment A plus B equals C. Okay, so the rate would be, before we determined it experimentally, we would say rate is equal to K a to the x, b to the y. And of course from the solutions unit you remember that the brackets mean concentration of reactants. Uh, and then x and y are going to be something called the order of the reactants. So it's going to, the order of the reactants is basically telling you what effect it has on the reaction. Um, notice that products do not appear in the rate law. Okay. Uh, the other things that are not going to appear later when we get to mechanisms are intermediates which I know you don't know what those are yet but just write it down and then catalysts typically don't. And I say typically because sometimes they can, um, but it's very rare. But for our purposes, we're never going to include them. At this level of our chemistry, we're not going to include catalyst in there. All right, so let's see how to calculate it. Or let's see what the orders mean first. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with zero first or second order. Um, occasionally, you could have a third order, but we're not going to see that in here. So basically, if you double the concentration and it does not affect the rate of the product, then it's a zero order. So I could double the concentration all day long and the rate is going to stay the same. So that would make something zero order. Okay? And first order is going to be if I double the concentration of the reactant and it doubles the rate, then it's going to be first order because it's a one-to-one -one rea uh, relationship there. If I were to double the concentration of the reactant and the, <clears throat> excuse me, and the rate quadruples, then that's going to make it second order. Okay, and then the overall order is just summing up all of the exponents or the orders of the other things. So, for instance, if I told you go back to that first equation and I said our rate was equal to K concentration of A concentration of B raised to the second, so I would be A would be first order because there's just one, B would be second order, and then my overall order would be third order. Okay, so pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to calculate this. All right, so our first one is pretty easy. We only have one reactant, so that helps. We don't have to mess with it with another reactant. So we'll start out with an easy one. So I'm going to look at, and it doesn't matter which one I look at, make it easy, make, pick the trials or, or the experiments that are going to make this an easy uh, math for you. So I could either do, I wouldn't want to use, like, I could use one and three, but it's not an, an easy doubling. So I'm either going to use experiment one and two, or I'm going to use experiment two and four. It doesn't matter really. So I'm going to look at this and say, okay, if I go, if I double my concentration here, so I doubled my concentration, right? If I look at my rate, I see that my rate went up by 4. So if I double my concentration and the weight quadruples, then that means that um, the CHO3 is going to be second order. So we're going to enter that one first. So it's going to be second order. So when I write my rate law, it should look like this. Rate is equal to K, which is our rate law constant. Forgot to mention that in the last slide. Sorry about that. Um, K is your rate law constant. 
and then you're going to do concentration of CH3, CHO, raised to the second. So my CH3CHO would be second order, and because there's only one reactant, it would be second order overall. So once we know what the rate law is, we can calculate our rate law constant, which is K. All right, um, let's go ahead and write that down. I totally left that out, and we need that. K is a rate law constant. Okay. So, if I want to calculate K, I now will rearrange and solve for X. So, I would do K is equal to rate over CH3, CHO to the second. And here I would just pick a trial. It doesn't matter which trial I pick. I can pick any one of those. There, if, as a matter of fact, I encourage you after we work at one, uh, you on your own work it with the second trial and see if you don't get a very similar answer because it is a constant. So I'm going to I'm going to pick trial one because it's the first one. So I'm going to say my rate. Oops, that's O2, and of course the units are molarity per second, and that's going to be over my concentration, 0.1 molar raised to the second power. Okay, so. It also is telling you to specify units, okay? Um, and so in AP Chem, when we do these equations, it's usually one point for the answer and one point for the unit because you have to keep up with your units on these. So we're going to write it in a different color so we can see. I've got 0.02 molarity per second, right? And then I'm going to end up dividing that by, when I square it, 0.01 molarity squared, okay? Because when I, I can't just square the number, I've got to square the unit as well. So now if I look at that, what's going to happen is this is going, this molarity is going to go away and then this one's going to just become an M, okay? So when I write my answer, it becomes two. And I'm going to do something kind of crazy here that's going to confuse you just a little bit. I'm going to say mol molarity to the minus one and second to the minus one because that's oftentimes the way we see that. Basically, that means it's just supposed to be on the bottom. That would be the same thing as saying liters over mole times second, because molarity is moles per liter, but it's on the bottom. So either one of these units would be acceptable, okay? What I encourage kids to do is, first of all, do the math, and then go back and look at your units and try to figure that out. Here's a tip, though, okay? Whatever overall order you are, so the overall order here is second, your units are going to be one less than that because this molarity is always going to cancel out with one of the ones on the bottom. So that's just a little tip. All right, let's do another one. And in this one, we've got two, okay? So we're going to have to look at this a little bit differently because we have two reactants. So what I tell you to do is find two experiments in which one of the reactants is held constant. So that way you're not having to deal with both of them changing, okay? So in this case, very quickly I've noticed that for experiment one and two, B is held constant. We're not changing the concentration. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say this is times two, right? And then I go look over here and this is times two. So that means it's first order. So A is going to be first order. And then I'm going to go look for B, and I'm going to find ones in which A is held constant. It makes my life easier. Okay. So I see that experiment 2 and 4, A is held constant. But what happens here? I tripled. Okay. I tripled it. But let's go look and see what happens to my rate. It went up by 9. Okay. Well, if I wanted to figure that out, I could see, say 3x is equal to 9, right? So it changed or it doubled, right? So x would be equal to 2. So that would make b second order. 
and then overall is third order. So the overall reaction is third order. So write the rate law. Rate is equal to K A B to the second. And that would be my rate law. So now calculating K. Remember I'm going to do rate over the concentrations. Again, pick whatever experiment you want. I usually just pick one because it's easier. So 6 times 10 to the negative 3 over, we're going to have 0.01, oh, just kidding, that's not 0.01, that's 0.1 molar, and then I'm going to have 0.05 molar to the second. So that will give me 6 times 10 to the ne negative 3, forgot my units, and then when I do that math I get 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4, and that's molarity cubed. So what's going to happen is that molarity is going to get canceled, and then that one's going to become molarity to the second. So when I do that math, I get 24, and then molarity to the minus 2, second to the minus 1 which would be the same thing as liters squared over moles squared times seconds. Okay, Either one of those are acceptable. The reason that I like to show you this way is that's the way it shows up usually on an AP exam, and I want you to recognize that. But this, this would also be uh, true. So if that makes more sense to you right now, feel free to write your units that way. Okay, So we're going to do one more. And then that's where we're going to stop today after this one. And we'll pick up reaction mechanisms uh, in lesson three. All right, so this one has three uh, reactants. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, if I look at these, I see, um, uh, well, C is held constant for the first three trials. So that's going to help. So, and then if we look at B, uh, it's only held constant for trial two and three. And fortunately for us, 2 and 3 is also where we have some changing. Okay. Now we're going to go a little bit backwards because we're not doubling it, but we're halving. Right? So the change, so let's do A first. The change from here to here is times 2. We're just going the other way. Okay. And if I go look at the change for that rate right here, again, going the other way, Sorry, I got interrupted. So 2 and 3, uh, I see that the rate got halved, or if we want to go from 3 to 2, it doesn't actually have to go 2 to 3. We could go 3 to 2 and see that I doubled my rate. Uh, I mean, I doubled my, excuse me, I doubled the concentration of my reactants. Then I go look at my rate, and I see that it went up by 4. Okay, so according to the notes, if I double it and it quadruples, it's second order. Um, another way to look at that, if it makes more sense mathematically, is 2x is equal to 4, so that means x has to be equal to 2, so it would be second order. Okay, That's how we're doing that mathematically. But you can just take my word for it that if it doubles the, rate, doubles the reactants concentration, then it quadruples the rate, then A is second order. Okay? All right. And so I'm going to look at... Um, now, where can I hold this constant? So if I'm looking at B, I see that I don't exactly double my rate, but I do increase my rate and on 1 and 3, whereas A is held constant and C is held constant. Okay, So we're going to look at, let's do this in a different color. So for B, we're going to look at trials 1 and 3. And I didn't double my rate, but I did increase it so I could figure that out. Makes my life easier because look what happened the rate stayed the same. And so if you change your concentration, increase your concentration, and the rate doesn't change, then that means B is zero order. Whoops, order, zero order. Okay, let's put it zero, okay? So now let's do C, and let's see what we're going to hold constant there. So um, if I look at trial 
3 and 4 for that, okay, even though B is changing, I can ignore B because I already found it to be zero order. So I don't need to worry about that. And I see that 3 and 4, A is held constant. So then what happens? And even though that is not a time, it's not a doubling, it's a times 3, look at what the rate does over there, times 3. So it has, I tripled it and I tripled my rate, which is going to be first order. So C is going to be first order. Again, we can go back to that, 3x is equal to 3, so we know that x has to be equal to 1. So that's how you would do that mathematically if you don't just see it on your own. And of course, 2 plus 1 means that this is third overall. So that our rate looks like this. Rate is equal to k, a to the second, and c. We leave out b altogether, okay? If it's zero order, you don't even put it in there, okay? Some people will put a b and raise it to the zero, but that's not necessary, okay? You just would write it like this, okay? So it wants us to calculate k now. So our I'm running out of room here, aren't I? Uh, let's go with trial one. So 2.4 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity per second. And then we're going to divide that. Sorry about time to squeeze this in. 0 0.20 molar to the second. 0.2 molar. So when I get that, I get 2.4 times 10 to the negative 6 molarities per second divided by 0 0.008 molarity cubed. Of course, this molarity is going to cancel out, and this one's going to become a 2. So that my final answer is 3 times 10 to the negative 4, molarity to the minus 2, second to the minus 1. Or you could have written liter squared, mole squared times second. All right? So... I know this is a totally new concept, and, and I know it's a little bit confusing, so try your best, and when we come back together uh, in class, we will, I will be answering questions and helping you with anything you don't understand. All right, have a good weekend.